Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Cordant. We are back for some more Pillars of Eternity 2 Deadfire. So, we are currently in the Outcast's Respite, or Respite? Respite? <laughs> Which was apparently like a, a witch's cave. Uh, we killed all of them in this section over here. There's still this strange purple pool thingy over there as, as well as this cauldron that I still have to figure out what to do with. And we had also picked up these encoded notes, which I am apparently unable to decipher. I think it, it needs to be a watcher check only, not one of my companions. Uh, let's also free this guy here. Uh, feels good to stretch my legs, Akira. Okay, so this guy is Tamawatua. Oh, and he just went back to studying something. Free once again. Was he an apprentice or something? How did you get captured in the first place? Bad luck, eh? Always this seems to happen to me. First pirates, now witches. Oh, for what? A salve recipe? It is madness. Hmm. Do you know what the witches were brewing in that cauldron? Huh. What potion requires bat bile, cat blood and dandelion fluff? <laughs> Even I'm not crazy enough to touch it, I say. You're not leaving. I just freed you. Iker, who do you think collected those ingredients for the witches? Me, Tamawatua. They are mine as much as anyone's, I say. Uh... I will take some time to study this island, I think. Strange things grow among its weeds and they will need names. Okay. And if you need supplies before you go, Tama will Ooh. say what he can find. Akira. I like the voice actor. He dips his head in graceful acknowledgement. Okay, what about my reward? You have the witch's notes? Oh! I will translate them for you as a show of thanks, Akira. Okay, cool. And what do you have for sale? You take a look, eh? So we got the deciphered notes. To create a draft of greater strength, a blend of flame and ruby make. What? To create a draft of greater strength, a blend of flame and ruby make. Is this like primal fire and a ruby? For one who seeks vitality, a mix of stone and pearl they need. To grant oneself a careful step, a brew of wind and emerald, emerald prep. If cleverness one lacks in spades, for flame and sapphire one needs must trade. For those few curse with lesser vision, other ban and win provision. And to be blessed with purpose or in intention, grind stone and amber in succession. So this looks like... What? Might, constitution, dexterity, intellect, perception, and resolve? Into each elixir in join we must the inclusion of a shining dust, a hearty smear of spirit essence, and water of a pure quintessence. I like the rhymes, but... Okay, so I... So I, maybe I can mix stuff in the cauldron and I can get some potions? Okay, so what does this guy have? He has some cool potions, actually. Thief spot. I'm gonna take both of these. This is something different. Insubstantial form. Ascension. Plus two to all power levels. I like that. Minaki is healing. Spatial alacrity. Mm hmm. Scorching vent. This is burn damage. This guy has a lot of. He has a lot of stuff actually, and a lot of interesting stuff as well. Reagents. I'm gonna take all of these and all of these. Okay. I'd carry more if I could, but I can't. I know. Sorry, I know. Friend. So, <clears throat> let me quick save this. And how? Oh, it's automatic. Okay. So, create potion of Mataru strength. You follow the directions you glean from the witch's notes. After cobbling together the necessary ingredients and dumping them into the cauldron as directed, you take your first tentative sip. You immediately feel tougher and more vital. What? So, I lost all of this stuff. I 
I feel tougher and more vital. Did I get might? Oh, I did! Oh, so what? I can get a permanent buff to all of my stats here? Can I... Yes? Can I spread them around? Oh, it's... Okay, it's a one-time deal. The sharp scent of residual chemical regions burns your nose. It's a one-time deal. Okay, I mean... Yeah, I'm not gonna bother reloading this because might is actually quite useful, so... I'm okay with it. Maybe the, maybe dexterity would have been better. Let me see. Uh, might, dex, perception... Eh, I'm, I'm fine. I'm fine with the might. Okay, so about this thing here is what I don't know what's gonna happen. Because we do have this option to drink from the pool, but doesn't really say much else. Let's te uh, actually quick save and test. Drink. You dip your bare hands into the pool and drink what doesn't slip between your fingers. A crackle of electricity runs down your spine. You suddenly feel like you could best a panther in a race through the jungle. That's good, I guess. Alchemic Guile, plus two decks, plus two perception. Okay. Uh, quick save. What if I do it again? The liquid flares with heat on your tongue and burns your throat going down. Oh, I got a serious burn. Okay, we have the luminous other potions for that. Try it again. You are briefly blinded by a blight... A blight flash of light? This <laughs> should be bright, right? You are suddenly certain you could calculate the movement of the stars without so much as an abacus to aid you. I'm guessing this is a buff. Oh my god, and they stack. No, so this is, this is apparently watcher only, right? So if I use someone like it there... I'm gonna use someone that doesn't have a luminous other potion. Because if they get injured... No, but I, I think it's gotta be my watcher here. And is this infinite is the question. Your tongue freezes and your teeth shatter. The liquid stirs in your stomach like a block of ice. We got frostbite. Well. Okay. Well, I guess I'm gonna try this one more time. I'm gonna drink a potion of luminous adra just to make sure we don't die here. Okay. Well. Yeah, but this is a this is a very interesting way to get some nice buffs on on the main character at least. <clears throat> I'm gonna quick save. If I get a cool buff, I'm gonna stick with it and just move away. If I get debuffed, I might just quick load. Leave it to me. Because I don't want to waste another potion. Yeah, okay. So I was considering if this was something like you get a buff, then you get an injury, buff, injury, buff, injury. But it seems it's just random. I can try again. Your stomach heaves and you need to throw up. Oh, so th this didn't even do anything. I'll see it done. A crack level. Okay, this is the same thing we already had. And it does not stack with itself. Okay. Okay, sure, fine. Yes. I guess you can kind of roll the dice there until you get all of your buffs. I'm not going to be exploiting that. Uh, I'm happy with both of my buffs here. Just going to move away. And uh, let me see. I'm just trying to think what I was doing here. I think I was doing the mapping. Yeah, mapping the archipelago. Return to Sansa. So we have completed it. Uh, which is... Cave. Explorer! What is this? Oh, I, can, I cannot see it there. Explorer. I'm gonna guess we finished the Explorer quest. Name all of the Uncharted Islands. Really? I kind of thought there were still going to be more. We have all of this section here still left to explore, but... Okay, I guess. We can go... 
Right, so now the question is, where am I going? I can return to Sansa. The Sea or the Shark. Oh, I think I know what I was going to do. I think I was going to do this one. A Sorcerer and a Gentleman. Head to Sayuka and search for any sign of Remaro or where he's gone. Um, I'm thinking now that I have all of my characters at max level, it wouldn't hurt me to leave someone behind to take Seraphon with me. So I might do that. Uh, so let me just check. So if I take away Takehu, who I think is the one that makes the most sense. And I bring in Seraphon. He's still level 13. I gotta level up all these people. <laughs> um, what do you even have? He's actually quite good. He has some superb stuff here. Superb breastplate. Yeah, he's he's doing well for himself. Uh, what kind of weapons do I have? Can I can I search for like superb? I can. Okay, that's very helpful. Oh, I have a two-handed sword. This is a hatchet. This is a dagger. Not bad. I have the flail, and then I have the will breaker. <clears throat> okay, I think he's fine the way he is. And what is this? Armor rating 10, recovery time. Uh... Sure, you can take this one. <clears throat> okay. Let me, let me look at this. Uh, no, I got... Okay. In order to level them up, I actually need to be on solid ground. Oh, wait, where am I? Uh, where is... Sayuka? It's over here. Okay. So let's go here. Captain Thanik. The deck of many things. I'm actually going to check this out. I don't think I've ever tried to trade with this ship. And it has a very unique name. I'm, I hope I'm not going into a storm. No, I'm fine. Okay. Let me just go back to where I was. Okay. Maybe if I just click on the boat, it works. He will automatically... Nope, he won't. <laughs> oh, he's going to Crookspur. Okay. Let me just quick save. Oh, this one is different. A ship appears on the horizon riding low in the water. Approach and identify it. The vessel boasts the sharp angles and flat front of a, tr uh, <clears throat> of a junk, but it does not fly the colors of Rawatai or any other naval power. Its banners identified as a merchant ship. The craft's hull appears heavily reinforced and its gun ports bristle with cannons, but it cuts a non-hostile path through the sea. Okay, hail the ship and prepare to board. Okay. I've I've tried trading with another ship before, but I didn't. Yeah, this is different. Greetings, my fellow captain. <laughs> Chanchi went ahead to say hello. It's a, it's a godlike, a moon godlike. The, okay, the moon godlike's short stature and sharp features mark him as being of elven blood, and his accent bears more than a trace of a Deedon. He bows slightly at the hip. Captain Thanik, at your service. Allow me to be the first to welcome you aboard my humble vessel, the deck of many things. This is a, uh, I'm not sure if this is something specific to Dungeons and Dragons, but that's what it sounds like to me from Baldur's Gate. The what? <laughs> the deck of many things, on account of the many things below the deck. Okay, give me a second. Okay, I am back, sorry. If there is one thing that I don't like is being home alone and then hearing some weird noise coming from the house. <laughs> but it was apparently nothing, I hope. Um, okay, on account of many things below the deck. <laughs> Very clever, I think you'll agree. Oh yes, I agree. <laughs> below you will find merchants from every corner of Aeora. Each vending an assortment of wares, both rare and unusual. Ooh, that sounds promising. He gestures toward the hatch to the inner holds. Grinning, he raises a single finger. Lest you think us easy marks, know that we have bested pirates and monsters of every sea. Cross us, 
and we'll be adding your shiniest bits and pieces to our inventory and your bodies to Andra. Mm -hmm. I kind of doubt you'd be able to take me on, but <laughs> sure. <laughs> but let it not come to that. Please come below, my new friends, and explore what the deck offers. Okay, well, we have some coffee for... Oh, okay. I, I was wondering who the hell leveled up. We're at level 20, but yeah, we have Seraphon in the party. Uh, now that I think of it, I might as well also pause the game now and do his level ups. Uh, it's going to be quick, uh, uh, kind of quick and dirty because I'm not really going to bother too much with Seraphon. Uh, beside, you know, the, the recommended quests, maybe. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to level him up to level 20 or wherever he goes. And then I'm going to unpause and see what we got. Be right back. Okay, I am back. Uh, level up done. <laughs> There's a couple of things which are actually quite interesting. He's left at like 19 and a half. Um, I was looking over some of the stuff we got. This is all kind of basic, brute, barbarian fighting. And then on the Cypher side, I took one of my favorite spells from PoE1, which is Amplified Wave. I also like this one here, the Empty Soul, plus 10 accuracy with Cypher spells versus Will, which is cool. But this one, this one looks really interesting. If I were to take a Cypher in my party, which right now I think my party is kind of locked and I'm not going to be taking anyone else besides my current setup. But this one, Ancestor's Memory, this is a um, an inspiration that I hadn't seen before. Brilliant. So it gives the target plus five intellect, plus one to all power levels. That's kind of whatever. It's interesting, but not that special. But then it also gives him plus one of all class resources per six seconds. So I think what this means is it's going to give, for example, my rogue extra guile or extra bond, or it could give uh, Aloth extra spells, Shoti as well. So this actually sounds very interesting. It does require 70 focus, but very, very interesting uh, inspiration here. I, I wonder if... If a cipher is the only way to do this or not, don't spoil it for me. Uh, but I, I will be looking out for other sources of brilliant. I think it's the first time I've seen it. Uh, and yeah, then nothing really special in the level up besides that. What so let's it? check out I this deck of many things here. So nobody to interact with on the top. Um, I liked what he was saying about getting all rare vendors and stuff in here. Ooh, this is a very nice ship. Ooh. Full of nice things as well. Zidako. Ado, and welcome, Aimiko. The plump dwarf bows low, hands outstretched to either side. Might I interest you in a new cloak? Perhaps gloves of the finest cut. A belt interwoven with incantations. Interwoven with incantations. I like it. You don't seem like much of a sailor. How did you end up here? Oh, it shows then. I'm afraid I'm still rather new to this. The slightest squall leaves me green for days. My ancestors, they would laugh me out the door. <laughs> he rubs the back of his head. Back in Velia? I apprenticed to the famed weaver, Selana Mezquinetra. She sent me to accompany a rather important shipment to the Republics. It was to be a grand adventure. Instead, the ship foundered, and only the grace of Andra and the sudden appearance of the deck spared me a sodden grave. That was two years ago, I think. Okay. Do you know anything else about the deck? You mean, like, where it came from? Afraid not, friend. I rather suspect Andra herself of birthing it from <laughs> the depths to fish out the few things she'd rather not see lost to the sea. Okay, so what do you have? I will fetch my chalk. My chalk? Why? <laughs> to, like, note down the prices, maybe? Gloves of the Dungeon Warden. Ooh, plus three accuracy and lockdown. Foe target, untargetable, stun for 15 seconds. Okay. Sash of Judgment, balance in all things. Deal 10% more damage against enemies above 50% health. Enemies deal plus 10% damage against the weather while above 50% health. 
Yeah, nice, nice belt for my rogue. <laughs> More damage taken. At the same time, I'm I'm kind of joking, but am I joking? Well, this is defensive. I think I think I'm gonna keep the current belt that I have. <laughs> it's not go too overboard with the offensive stuff. But I'm at four hundred thousand gold. I think I can just Ado buy this. Well, might I interest you in it? I will fetch my. Well, first I'm gonna try and steal, but then we'll see. Camp of the Laughing Stock, Village Fool. What the hell? Immune to resolve afflictions minus ten deflection. Huh. Interesting. Minus one stealth because of the the thingies. Uh, what's the name of the thingies? Uh, I don't know it in English. Be I guess it's just bells. I wonder if it has like a, a different name than bell. Missile gloves, minutes bounding missiles, charges remaining 10, boots of evasion, boots of stealth, boots of speed, troll hide belt, fine robe. Okay, nothing too special. Um, there's a bunch of people here, but I have Seraphon, and one of the points of having Seraphon is that this guy has stealth all the way up. So I'm gonna try and see what we can actually get. In this place because this seems like like a, a good place to actually start robbing people Wow even with 15 stealth Jesus they detect me right away okay, can I steal from you okay, from you I can't Pause the game. Oh, baby. Sandals of the Water Lily. Immune to dexterity afflictions minus 10 to all defenses. God damn. Belt of Magrans Chosen. Grants linked in flames. Plus 3% damage dealt is burned with weapons. So it's like a, a burn lash. Small chance to summon a hostile fire blight on hit. Helios Talons. 25% chance on scoring a melee weapon hit to cause the enemy or wielder raw oh, or wielder raw bleed damage over time plus 5% damage delta slash with melee weapons. All of them are interesting. Man. I wanted to steal a lot more things, but it's impossible. Can I can I go to the corner here? And refresh my stealth bar? Nope, I cannot. Okay. So, I do want to check something out, because I always forget this. I'm going to quick save. And I'm going to see if um, lock picking is counted as stealing. I think it is. Where there's a pick, it's finished. No, people don't seem to care. I'll deal with it. Done. Of course. Okay, well then, I'm just going to continue. Where there's a pick, it's not it's like I'm getting experience... Um, it's not like the experience matters at this point, except for Seraphon there, but... I'll deal with this. If I can just lockpick everything, and then use Seraphon or try to... Way. Oh, wow. 24 lock difficulty, and I'm currently at 21. So if I, if I eat one of these things... It should be enough, right? With some lockpicks. I'll do. Yeah. It's finished. Okay. So, lockpicking doesn't matter. But I do know that trying to open this stuff will matter and people will go hostile. Okay, so what can we do here to try and get around this? Oh, I still have these on. God damn it. Go there. So I can give the stealth boots to Seraphon to bring him up to 17 stealth. Um, but that's kind of it. But I do wonder like, if pausing the game is going to be enough for me to just steal everything. Or maybe just use spark crackers. Yeah, because this is not enough. Okay, okay. Well, uh, spark. P 
perfect. I guess I can start down here. And I can stay like in this corner and then just toss this thing over there. Quick save. Oh, come on. Yes. Vial of stop. Ooh. 10 seconds only? It's a massive buff, but 10 seconds only. Antidotes. Oh, ho, 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 ho. Necklace of the Harvest Moon. Grants Midnight Wish. I have a lot of, <laughs> a lot of um, items to read here. One per rest, Midnight Wish. I, I think it's just a Moonlight or a Moonwell. Yeah, I think this is just a Moonwell. And minus 5% recovery time for 6 seconds on a critical hit. Okay. Ring of Mule's Wit, minus 8 intellect. Resistance to perception, intellect, and resolve. This could be interesting, but I'm going to say I don't like the, the penalty to intellect. Color of Ilthus's Light, grants Sun's Blessing. One per rest. Calls down a shaft of intense sunlight burning and potentially blinding those caught in the area of effect. I think this is the druid spell Solar Flare or something like that. Mm -hmm. And Dawn's Reflection. 10% chance to reflect against spells during the day. Eh. Okay. I'll take it. <laughs> That's for sure. This guy is called Bobble. I love the name. Cannot pickpocket him. Yeah, we know. Okay, so let's steal from over here if I can. <clears throat> uh, toss this, like, over there. Man, Spark Crackers confirmed best item in the game. Oh, no! No! You bitches. Okay, I think I have to do it a little bit further out, maybe. Like this. Okay, pause. Pausing is also very important for this. All exceptional stuff, so this is just money. Okay. Take all of that. This has been <laughs> a very successful and very um, <laughs> profitable venture here. Uh, let me see if I can toss this like over there. Uh, or maybe like this. I wonder if this guy will go. Yeah, he will. Good. Okay. Okay, he has most of his stuff here with the exception of the... Never mind. The rare items are over here. I... God damn it. I do want the sash for my rogue. In case I want to go full glass cannon. And now the only thing left is this thing here. Which looks to be the more important one. So I am very excited about it. Um, quick save. I want to see if this guy also goes. Please go. Mm, painful. No. No. I think I have some more on my rogue. Yeah. Let's try it again. So maybe I can toss it into that corner over there. Or like over there. Uh, no, like over there. Ooh. Oh, I think it was worth it. Berat's throwing bones. Oh, summon one shade. Beloved night doll. Summon a valiant Adiran knight. Very cool. Ooh, deck of endless possibilities. Draw a card. The true origins of this deck remain contested by many, but one account suggests the initial creator to be none other than the eccentric Adiran archmage Thane. 
While the majority of his work is secreted away, likely due to being catastrophic failures, <laughs> this deck remains a testament to his ingenuity. Some colleagues speculate that Tain intentionally imbued some of his own essence into the deck, which accounts both for his chaotic nature and powerful effects. We're gonna have to test what this does. Fool's shoes to go together with the cap. Apply confused to enemies that hit the weather with an intellect affliction. Plus 25% trap effectiveness, minus one stealth. Okay. Yeah, I guess they're just called bells, because it's a belled. Cape of the Falling Star, very pretty looking. Grants Lone Traveler. When not near allies, the weather grant gains a bonus to all defenses. Okay. This is interesting. It doesn't say the range though, which is important. And Fiery Descent, hostile only burn crush AoE on unconscious. Yeah. I mean, for a solo character, this could be good. Uh, but this is meaningless for a solo character. Unless they have something like revive effects. Ring of Prosperity's Fortune grants the power of money. Increases the weather's hit to crit chance based on the party's current wealth? Oh! We are quite wealthy! 3% convert to... So 3, 6, 9, 12 and 15. It doesn't say the, the thresholds for gold. Ooh, I love that. <laughs> Cloak of Poverty. Is it like the opposite? Impoverished. Increases the wearer's resolve when the party has little currency. Okay. <laughs> Interesting. Necklace of unlocked possibility. It's a key. Transforms into a random magic weapon at the start of each combat. Eh. Now this is... I wonder if there's like some kind of weird magical weapon that's like super powerful or something. Slippers of the Assassin. I like the name. Enemies attacked by the wearer require one additional ally to flank. So that's a penalty for me. Or does this mean to flank one of my people? And it also grants shadow form. One per encounter. The wearer's killing blows cause them to become invisible. Ooh, for a short duration, granting them a means to escape or strike again. Oh man, this could be very good for my rogue. Very good. It's only one per encounter, which makes me sad. But goddamn, this could be very powerful indeed. Ah, okay. And Ring of Reset. Ring of Reset? Grant saving fate. Charges remaining three. Immune to injury. What? Time is rewound, allowing the weather to revive from unconsciousness without injury. Okay, so anybody going for the the ultimate achievement, I think it's the one that you have to go for the Triple Crown solo. I'm guessing this can be a very, very valuable <coughs> ring to have. I, I mean, I don't know. A lot of very cool things over here. A lot of very cool things. So I'm going to try out this ring, which has the power of money. I definitely want to try these slippers. And the deck of many things here, of endless possibilities. Okay, and these summons are gonna just go away for now. Oof. Man, this was a, a nice haul here. And this is only stuff that we could steal. There's probably more that they sell. I am very intrigued. So this just gives me dexterity and resolve and... It's actually quite good. I do like these boots. They're probably better for it there though. He has charge now. So it's not like I really need the leap. Okay, let's try this. So you can have these. Uh, leap can just go away for now. And I'm gonna use the assassin slippers, which look very pretty. And this, I'm guessing, is a quick item. Yes, it is. Okay. So, I'm going to do a quick save here just to see how this deck works. Because in Baldur's Gate, at least, I think you can kill yourself using the deck. 
Oh, it's combat only. Really? Combat only. Okay, still, I'll test it out. And this one is also combat only. But I have to see how it actually works. So I am going to lose... Ugh, I do like that buff. I'm going to lose a lot of defense doing this. Well, not a lot, but... Five. We're going to see how this works. This one is... is <laughs> It's kind of suicidal. I think I prefer to have this one, honestly. 188 health, I would go to 163. Yeah, I'll keep this one for now. I will keep it. Okay, well, a lot of stuff was stolen. Let's see what they also sell. Okay, so Captain Thanik. Finding everything to your liking, Captain. Oh, very much so, my friend. Thanix smiles when light shining from his horns. Quite the unusual ship you have here. He pats his desk lovingly. <laughs> Isn't it, though? And older than any of us aboard to boot. So Tara keeps the old tub looking like new, more or less. You might have noticed the Engwithan imagery in the beams. Or the copper wiring. I suspect the deck, hull at least, dates back to that ancient fabled empire. Mm hmm. Um. Let's just make him happy, I'm sure. Not that I'd make any grand claims about its import. Probably just an old merchant craft lucky enough to survive whatever brought Ingwith low. Okay. And how did you become to be the captain of the deck? <laughs> Not just the decks, but the hull and the masts, too. <sighs> His laughter rings like a bell. Let's laugh politely. I came to it near <laughs> a century gone by now and boarded the deck as a wee lad. A wee a lad? Even. <laughs> Might have thrown me overboard, the old captain, were it not for the shine. The shine? He taps the luminous horns, proje ah, projecting from his scalp. Few sailors go seeking Andrasire. Was the first time my being godlike had caused me aught but suffering. Hmm. It's not easy being gods touched. You don't know the half of it, friend. Okay. Do you have anything to sell me too, or do you live off the profits of the crew? I, I sell the finest enchanted oh, yeah. objects in the dead fire. Will cost you a shilling or sixty, but quality comes at a price. One or sixty. Okay. Let me see what you have. Nothing but the best aboard the deck. <laughs> oh, this was unexpected. Okay, I, I love that. Ooh, I have the finest stuff. Nope. <laughs> Everything is gone, my friend. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, so this <laughs> A broad-shouldered Homawa stands before crates and racks of armors and weapons. The cool tones of her skin and the geom geometric patterns in her oil-stained smock mark her as a native of Rawatai. She smiles at your approach, displaying her sharp teeth and bows her head. Greetings. I assume Thenic explained our little floating trading floor, so uh. I'll cut through the fat. I'm Sautara, purveyor of fine armors and weapons, whether for kith or ship. Ooh. What are you in the market for? Let's continue going for this. This is an unusual vessel. <laughs> he is, isn't he? Looks like a junk now, but uh, that's mostly my doing. Underneath the decades of patches and filth, there's some truly strange shit. Copper. Audra, Adiran runes, Valian pipes. She shakes her head. Best guess is that he came out of old Angwith, modified over the millennia by whoever crewed him. I wanted to rename him the Junky Junk of Junk, but uh, Fennec wouldn't have it. I was also thinking about this, because people usually refer to ships as, as her or she. The ships are him. Trust me on that. I know him inside and out. Okay, I... I... I won't ask. Let me see what you have. Peruse at your pleasure. Okay, so... Uh, I, I haven't tested this one out yet, the worm tongue. It does fire a long range. Goes up to 400 meters. But I think mine are more powerful. I could take something like this, Arcane Lanterns, just to get some more traveling speed. And the Steel Helm. Eh. 
<laughs> Let's take this. Uh, the helm I'll see. There might be some better choices. Uh, bubble. Also, funny enough, sometimes the spark crackers just make people stay in a different position because initially the fishy was over there. A lago fat stands in the corner, its head turned to the side so that it might track you with one bulbous eye. A large bucket of briny water rests stuck and tucked into the corner behind it, a sponge just breaking its dark surface. The wilder gestures at the nearby shelves in what may be an invitation to peruse its wares. How do you know if these things want you to pet them? <laughs> I love it there. It hisses through needle sharp teeth. Uh, let's just peruse its wares. Okay, so he sells potions, which is the same thing we just stole. Okay, so. Magrans, tits, and bareth balls, I swear. These dice are fucking weighted. Okay, proper part of talk. I was gonna say, since when I press tab, his name comes up, it usually means he has some unique dialogue. The Orland fumes as a chuckling ocean folk sweeps up his coin. His large eyes swivel towards you. The merchants are all after the here, mate. Talk to one of them if you aim to barter or buy. Who might you be? We might be the Ans. The Ans and the Blades paid no small share of the take to keep prying and questions to a minimum. Savvy? Mm, do you want to make some coin? The pair exchange quick glances. We're listening. Oh, crap. <laughs> Okay, okay. Quick save because this might turn sour. Shove off, eh? Oh! <laughs> okay, well, let's carry on. I guess in a future playthrough I might look at that. Um, <laughs> I'm guessing maybe we can cause them to mutiny and then just kill everyone and steal. Okay, but we're not playing as evil people, so I'm not going to take the ship by force. Uh, if I do play an evil playthrough, which I will eventually, then I might consider that. Uh, where do I go? Oh, I, oh, over here, I think. Okay, so uh, not to lose track of what we were doing, I was going to Aisuka I, I, Sayu, Sayuka for the quest with Seraphon. We haven't gone here yet. We have, we've had this... Wait, Takabna. No. Uh, we've had this quest for a very long time now. Um, but I just didn't get around to it, so... Let's check it out now. Any port in a storm? What is this? Any port in a storm? I wish this was alphabetical. Oh, sail to all major ports in Deadfire. Okay. Interesting. Under Secretary and Tebe. You are welcome in Sayuka, Traveler. As surely as the winds stir the sea. The young Juana woman gives you a sunny smile that shows every one of her pointed teeth. No, no, no. How many times must I demonstrate the proper way to greet a visitor? Okay, Mr. Undersecretary. The Undersecretary makes emphatic chopping motions with his hands, a snarl curling his thin lips. I say, I must have forgotten again. Will you remind me of the line, Under Secretary? We say clear skies, traveler. Simple, elegant, and no smiling. Do you understand, Greeter Tebe? Oh, he's training her, I guess. Can you repeat it once more? I want to make sure I've got it. <laughs> Tebe turns wide, innocent eyes on the Under Secretary. The Under Secretary opens his mouth to speak, but his expression abruptly clouds. He shoots a scowl at Tebe and elects instead not to dignify her joke at his expense. Questions, traveler? Uh, what can you tell me about Sayuka? Sayuka, known to my people as Ribiri, is a colonial outpost of the Royal Deadfire Company. Okay. 
Tabby makes no effort to hide the boredom in her voice. The island of Sayuka is the Royal Deadfire Company's center of engineering research and development in the archipelago. Hmm. Our work is directed by Fleet Master Okaya, the youngest Brawatayan ever to hold the title. Best of her class at the Naval Academy in Tokoa, and a brilliant engineer, our Fleet Master. Pride warms his voice. You forgot to mention the giant sharks, Under Secretary. Wait, giant sharks? Giant sharks, giant coral, giant trees, Hekira. The only thing not bigger in Sayuka is Askuana. <laughs> she chuckles. Small mercy. The undersecretary mutters under his breath. No one knows why things grow large in Sayuka, but there are all sorts of theories. Me? I think Galloway smiles on us. Tebe's cheeks glow with a faint blush, the first authentic emotion you've seen cross her face. Superstition is unbecoming of a Royal Dead Fire Company officer, Tebe. Hmm. Okay. I say, it's a lucky thing I'm not one then. <laughs> uh, why are you dressed like a Royal Dead Fire Company soldier, Tebe? Pekira, I wonder the same every day. Tebe tugs at the neck of her uniform and rolls her dark eyes at the undersecretary when she thinks he's not looking. I'm gonna bet she's like the daughter of someone important placed in this position because otherwise she would have been fired. Tebe learns to perform her duties as a Rawatayan might. The undersecretary straightens his back and squares his shoulders. Her fellow Juana show a lamentable disinterest in the proper way of doing things. He nods curtly in Tebe's direction. Do not speak about me as if I am not here. What is an undersecretary exactly? A career sandal sniffer and busybody. <laughs> so far as I can tell. Tebe shrugs. You ungrateful sag. I am the second in command to Fleet Master Okaya, the governor of your piddling little island, and I will not be mocked by a smart mouth idler like you. <laughs> the undersecretary's jowls quiver <laughs> with barely contained rage. So I have heard many, many times. <laughs> Teb emits your eyes and raises her brows emphatically. Is it just me or is this guy terrible? You don't know the half of it. Everybody liked it <laughs> because it's playful. An impish smile plays at the corner of her mouth. What was that, Greeter Tebe? No, no. Surely just the breeze, Undersecretary. No, oh, it's just the breeze. <laughs> okay, this, this brings me back to Skyrim. Tebe's impish smile grows into a mocking grin. You will call me Sir. Akira. I certainly will not. Okay, so what was the point of this exactly? <laughs> Farewell? Okay. Uh, let me also refresh my memory as to what this quest even is, because I don't remember. Seraphin wants me to help me track down an old pirate, na uh, an old pirate named Remaro. Oh, this was something we picked up in Fort Deadlight, so a long, long time ago. Uh, so head to say you can search for the sign of Remaro or he's gone. Udin, this I think was the lady in the Luminous Bathhouse, claimed Romaro intends to resupply at Sayuka before leaving the dead fire. Seraphon wants us to follow in search of the old pirate. Alright. Uh, what do you guys have, by the way? Since I have Seraphon, I'm gonna try and pickpocket some more people. I kinda gave up on pickpocketing people some time ago because usually. They don't have anything worth stealing. Well, I'm gonna guess there are some exceptions though, but still. This game board is scuffed and scratched from frequent use. Okay. A lot of named people. Oh. Oh. Ooh. The Mung Bean's mouth organ. The Gallows Breaker. Pr plus 3 to all drug power levels. Okay, that's very specific. I haven't been using drugs that often. Mostly because I don't like the drug crash effect. It's gonna make me lose all of my buffs and that's kind of terrible. Um, but maybe I should. I don't know. Let me place you over here, by the way. Uh, so what, who are you guys? When are the wrong time going to leave? 
A broad-shouldered man with a long, jagged scar across his brow argues with a woman outside the longhouse. He throws his hands up, about to shout, but the woman cuts him off mid-exclamation. But apparently they don't want the Rawatayans here. And the Undersecretary is a Rawatayan. I will not return to the longhouse, Weto, never! And I won't rub my teeth about it further! She plants her hands firmly on her hips and juts out her chin in defiance. But what are you so stubborn? The Rawatayans do us a great favor and you spit in their faces! Hmm. Weto ceases his shouting when he notices you listening in. What do you need? Is that a problem here? Not at all, not at all. My sister and I are just having a small disagreement. Weto rubs at the back of his neck and looks away, embarrassed. It is because you speak like this that I yell at you in the first place. You're beginning to sound like those Rawatayan outlanders and it shames me to say so. What's her problem with the Rawatayans? Ignore her. She has an urchin up her ass about her cousins <laughs> from the north and can't be persuaded. I should know. I've tried. He shoots Tiba an irritated look and rolls his eyes. Is it so unreasonable to want to protect my culture, our culture, from our greedy neighbors? She spits on the ground between you and grits her teeth. They arrive in ships laden with goods they believe will please us and think that gives them the right to build their walls on our land. Then they act surprised when we don't all fall at their feet with cries of gratitude. She has a point. Akira, don't encourage her. I will never hear the end. <laughs> We are no strangers to the menaces of the Deadfire. Pirates, Colonials, Nagati's children. We have bested all of them before. We don't need them or their walls to keep us safe. And we surely don't need their longhouse. I mean, the walls are useful, but... Okay, so I'm not... I'm not I don't think I'm gonna go too much into the politics of this thing. I am curious about this one, though. What does all of this have to do with the longhouse? Another of the Rawatayan's tricks. When our huts were destroyed in the storms, they did not rebuild them like they were as we requested. They built this longhouse instead. Are you not one people? They said. Why do you live divided, each cast apart from the others? They believe they know what's best for us, but how we live is not their business. I agree. The fleet master says we are weak because we don't work as one. She doesn't see that it's our differences that make the Huana strong. She doesn't want to see it, lest it put the lie to their enterprise here. Okay, so um, I'm just gonna go for this one. Weto, why do you support the Rawatayans? We are no strangers to storms. But last year we suffered many powerful ones in quick succession. And our harvest of Kawiki fruit was destroyed. Price share was rationed. Famine loomed. And then the Rawatayans sent ships. Load after load of food, enough to see us to the next harvest. They could have left us to die, but they didn't. It was only a ploy to make us dependent on them, Akira. Uh... We took their food and helping hands, and now we sleep in their buildings and watch the sea from their walls. Okay, this might also be a little bit too much, woman. Well, I might as well just, <laughs> just go for this one as well. The Juan and Rawatines are both Homawa. Why not be allied? Under whose banner? Rawatais? Then we cease to be Hawana as surely as if they conquered us. We have the land and resources Rawatai needs, and they have the military might we lack. We share a common ancestor. Why not create a common culture? Together we would be strong. I say, if you truly believe that, then you're a bigger fool than I thought. So I, I, I can choose to go with one or the other or just ignore all of this? You're all in over your heads. Yeah. Then leave, Akira. Unless you wish to drown with us both. Tipa sneers and crosses her arms over her chest. She looks away, her teeth clenched. I say, if you have nothing constructive to add and don't intend to help, then take my sister's advice and go. Mm. We have cynics aplenty. We will live without one more. Okay. Well, I wasn't very helpful, I'll be honest. Wito squeezes Tipa's shoulder and frowns. She twitches and looks at him from the corner of her eye, but doesn't move to shake him off. I hate to see Tipa and Wito fight. Yeah, okay, so... The reason why I didn't take sides there is because... Well, first of all... I'm not really into all of the politics between these two factions. Um, I don't necessarily agree specifically or only with one of them i do think there are benefits to both but yeah okay let's do this pick there's a way done 
Alright, cool. Oh, it's, it was a very experience heavy one. Let's try and steal. Okay, sure. No! Thank you. Ooh, a support warhammer, okay. So this area isn't that low level. Maybe. Okay, that is... This is low... <laughs> Over, then under, then twist. Good. Hey, Kira, it looks so easy when you do it. I was about to say, this is a long house, but <laughs> it really is a long house, literally. So, yeah. These near identical beds are well built, but offer little privacy. Yes, indeed. Personally, I wouldn't want to live like this. What for, Cap? Aye, aye. Okay. What to do? Those Raparu dare make such a racket in my long house. What were those royal dead fire fools thinking? A large Juana man glares down the length of the building, his fists clenched tight. I don't know if the Rawatines also have the the cast thing with the Ruparu and the, the share wealth and stuff like that. You're an ass. Yeah, you're an ass. You'd feel the same if you knew anything about the Juana. The warrior grunts, his knee lifting his lip. What do you want? Your room's much nicer than the others. I am Mataru, a warrior. Uh -huh. The best quarters are mine by right. And uh, this is... I don't like this. And yet I cannot display my most precious possession, my grandmother's warhammer, for fear the Raparu <laughs> might steal it. It is absurd. Well, I stole it. Why would the Raparu steal your stuff? They know no better. A Juana soul is not born into the Raparu without reason, Whoa. after all. He can hardly resist rolling his eyes. Yeah, you're a lovely person. How did the Royal Dead Fire Company come to control Sayuka? Not even the greatest Mataru can stand against a fleet of Rawataian warships. The warrior speaks with a bitter shake of his head. Sure, dude, okay. What? These crates are overflowing with personal belongings that couldn't fit in the longhouse. A middle-aged Kuwaru woman raises her brows in question when you approach, her hands too full with braided ropes of dried reeds to greet you properly. Beside her stands an elderly Roparu man, awkwardly grasping his own bundle of reed rope. So what is this again? The artisanal and merchant class of Juana society. Ah, okay. Oh, hello. Come to watch me tie rugs, have you? Asaru, he has been teaching me. He indicates the woman beside him with a dip of his chin. The corners of his mouth twitch like he's trying to hide a smile. What say, traveler? Isn't it unusual for Kuwaru and Roparu to do the same work? It is, as you say. But I have always admired the beautiful rugs Osaru makes. And Nadunga can fix anything. Is it not reasonable we should learn from each other? It is. Just unusual. Uh, though she smiles as she speaks, Osaru's words hold a defensive edge, as if she's had to explain that unusual arrangement many times before. <laughs> Akira, especially if we must suffer Waturi together. A sly grin spreads across the old man's face, and he elbows Osaro playfully in her side. Just so. Osaro sweats his arm away with a small laugh. Then, her thoughts returning to Aturi, she makes a face like she's bitten into an underripe quickie fruit. Is it stressful having all the casts living together in one building? It's not so bad. <laughs> Excepting the nights Waturi gets into the palm wine. Akira, but that man does snore loud enough to call down the mm -hmm. rains. She snorts, and Nedunga beside her smothers a raspy chuckle. There is hardly any space to tie my rugs, to be certain. And I haven't had a moment to myself in weeks. But there are also new friends to be made. Nedunga finishes her sentence with a warm smile. Mm, I see what Nedunga wants. Can you teach me how to tie a rug? Ah, it's not a skill one learns in an afternoon. But should you wish to spend many months here in Jesus. this long house, you're welcome. No, thank you. <laughs> A deep, throaty laugh rumbles through him. I say, we have the room. So long as you do not mind sleeping like so many scrolls stuffed in a shelf. Osaru shares in Nadunga's laugh. Farewell. Carry the winds with you, traveler. So this just looks like it's lore on, on the factions because we didn't get anything here. No quest, no nothing, just dialogue, I guess. 
Seems a little bit unnecessary. Um, I know it's to learn about the culture of the game and stuff, but... Subtle markings on the fish hide su uh, fish's hide suggest that lampreys of unusual size haunt the waters around Sayuka. Okay, so here we have Takwa, Kowami... The fish on these racks have grown many times larger than the species you will get. Okay, Lonely Dog. Shiba. Hello, Shiba. Perception and hits converted to crits. Cool. Is there something here? Uh, you go back over here, and I guess you can go over there. I want to have a free slot for uh, Nature's Bounty. Boy, cat. Oh. There he be. Oh, he. There be Romaro. Sure is my ass be blue. I was actually just about to say I'm gonna finish the episode, but I guess not. Seraphon runs to meet an old white robed man. Okay. I wish you'd not come, my lad. Please though I be to see you. Even all these anarchists spare no mercy for mutineers. So he's a mutineer in Aldi's uh Seraphon breaks away and peers up at Rimaru. Aye. But you, a traitor? The very thought of it be ludicrous. He spreads his open palms wide to either side. Return with us. I'll be protecting you, and we'll be seeing your fair judging. With a slow shake of his hand, Romaro swallows. I can't, Blue. Much as Blue. I loathe to leave. I'm dead to these waters, and they to me. Seraphon gapes and sputters before finding his response. Break my biscuits and call me <laughs> Swabby. <laughs> You've gone addled in your dotage, ain't you? The Orlan looks to you, lower lip twitching. Captain, unsheave that silver tongue of yours and talk some damn sense into this old sort. Um, okay, so why did you leave Fort Deadlight? You might have been safe there. I couldn't bear to remain, sheltered or no. It's a hopeless feeling, bearing witness to the slow decline of something I once held such pride in. There's still be pride to be had. Honor, too. Things be changing, sure as shit. But you can't thread them narrows if you ain't even it to wheel. I hope I'm wrong. If only for your sake. I don't think the Principe can survive as is. And I can't watch something I devoted my life to sink into ruin. Why would you leave the Principe? The Principe have changed. And not for the better. Once, we aligned behind a common purpose. Now... We fractured into two extremes, each wallowing in its own corruption. Guess okay, so the old blood versus the new blood. You're fleeing your problems. Ark, these roomy eyes have seen too much. Nepotism and cronyism run rampant, rotting the Principe from inside out. Power consolidates behind the least deserving. The Consuelo's leadership founders, and with it, my faith. But lay that plan of you old sea dog. <laughs> You're no good as any. There ain't no faith on these waters. Save that, you'll be finding for yourself. He flashes a crooked smirk and strikes a closed fist against his chest. Betwixt your brains and my swagger, we'll be right in the good ship Principe San Patrina forthwith. And be shot of these ship squiffy doldrums. <laughs> ship squiffy doldrums. Romaro's frown deepens as he looks away from Seraphon and towards the sea. A fine dream. I pray to Andra that you achieve it. For me, though, the current flows but one way. A return to the Principe would mean my death. Is it true, what you're accused of? I've not heard every charge against me. But that of mutiny, of that charge, I bear guilt. Seraphon's ears droop. He reaches for Romaro, but stops short, letting his hands fall. Why? The sorcerer were our own in kin. We're a cock swelling pride. And you barred it to an half drowned old elf for a pint built fucking clipper. Standing intently on the ground at Romaro's feet, Seraphon shakes his fists bald to the sides. Fourteen years I spent swabbing them decks. Longer yet for you. Captain Bastian trusted you. I trusted you. His glare rises to meet Romaro's eyes. Fuck. Bon night, Miko. Romaro's mouth opens briefly before closing again, and he swallows. Sientere, Seraphin. I've disappointed you. Hurt you. No words can justify my actions. 
I only hope you believe me that I did what needed doing. How can I? With a tired shrug, Seraphon looks away. Okay, so we have an inside check here. You're hiding something. Ach, that I am. Many things. For many reasons. I learned long ago that it's oft times better to hold your tongue. The Watcher here reminded me that you and me, we'd be deeper than two hands on a deck. We'd be kin. You'd be the closest thing I've ever had to a father. And if you be setting sail, I'll be embarking with you. He does have a lot of um, reputation interactions. Your journeys with this Watcher have changed you, Blue. You wear it well, Bon Amico. He sighs and shakes his head sadly. Captain Bastian had the sorcerer slaving. Ah, so this is the reason why he he mutinied. Romaro frowns at his dark, wrinkled hands and rubs his palms together. Seraphon blinks, expression blank. His mouth opens, closes, opens again. His fur bristles, hears angling lower. Slaving? What kind of fathom headed horn swoggle be this? The sorcerer were my kin. They weren't slaving. I hunted slavers for the captain. We freed slaves together. So I also believed. But Bastian sold those we saved to the Crookspur slavers. I found records of it in his quarters Whoa. almost a decade's worth. When I confronted him, it went poorly. Rage rushes through your blood, flushing your skin, and cold hate spirals along the length of your spine as confusion blurs your vision. I'm gonna let the visions come. Sand beneath your feet, crusted and blooded. You young and small, filthy and shaking in fright. Cheers from all corners, jeers too. And the shouts of the kith before you, Omawa and thrice your height. Heavy muscle and soft fat wrapped in bright robes. Don't make me go again, you plead. Don't make me. His heavy hand sends you sprawling in the sand to a chorus of jubilant applause. You bounce to your feet as the other slave boy approaches. You feel his thoughts, a tickle in the back of your mind. His fear, greater than your own, but what can you do? Only one may live. You silence everything but the anger, but the hate. And it propels your snapping teeth and grasping hands. The blows light but fast, and the other youth all screams. Sientere, bon amico. Forgive me. So he was like a slave gladiator. Romaro stands a bit unsteadily. I meant you not to know. To keep your faith in our traditions. To remain optimistic. A bright star within the Principe. Uh... I agree with him. I'm not going to take him to the Consuaglo. You okay, Seraphon? Seraphon snorts and shakes his head. Moisture mats the fur beneath his eyes. We'll leave you be, Romaro. Agrasima, Watcher. The clipper will be loaded soon, and then we'll be away. Cores, Seraphin. Bon amico. Take this. May you have rare cause to use it. He provides Seraphin with a tightly wrapped package. Fire in the hole. It's a blunderbuss. It's superb. Wow. This could be a very cool weapon to pick up early on. Because this quest doesn't involve any fighting, it's just coming over here and speaking. Uh, explosive shot. Basic attacks deal best of pierce or slash in a small AoE. I like the small AoE. I hope we meet again someday. On calmer seas. Caress, Bonamico. Seraphine turns away. Okay. Well, yeah, I was not going to take him to be judged by the pirates. Screw that. He was right doing what he did. Uh, we have dialogue here with Seraphon, apparently, but I'm going to leave that for the next episode. This one has gone a bit too long already. Uh, as always, my friends, thank you so much for being here with me in the channel, watching some PoE2 Deadfire. If you guys have any questions, suggestions, anything like that, leave a comment below. If you are enjoying the content, consider subscribing um, for more. There's videos coming out every single day, and I hope to see you all in the next episode. Until then, stay safe, everyone.